Good day, everyone. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar. So today I'm going to be talking about the uh, high-frequency oscillatory uh, ventilation, uh, specifically the two types of uh, ventilators that we use to perform a high-frequency oscillatory ventilation here in the United States. And these are the Sensormedics uh, 3100A and 3100B. Um, the picture you see in front of you is of the Adult Plus, the 3100B. Um, there really is not a whole lot of difference between the A and B. Obviously, one's for um, big, bigger people and one's for littler people. Um, but really, the, 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 the biggest difference is on the uh, 3100A right here. Um, there's, a little, there's a little limiter um, control. Uh, that does you do not see that on the um, the 3100B here. So on this video, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to go ahead and um, familiarize you guys with the basic components of the ventilator. I'm not really going to talk about the theory of high frequency ventilation and and when we do it and how it works and and you know the the uh, the, the the settings and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, this is just basically to familiarize everybody with um, the the basic interface. Um, so well, let's go ahead and get started. So what we have is I'm going to go ahead and start on the left here, and I'm going to circle this right here. Okay, this um, this is actually a um, I don't know if you can see this very well. This is actually a picture I took back when I was doing clinical rotations in respiratory school. But there's a little ball little ball there and this is a little a little gauge um, and then this is a little little knob that you turn and uh, you can either turn it this way or that way and um, that produces something known as bias flow <coughs> excuse me this is bias flow um, that's the flow that's always going through the circuit of the ventilator and perhaps in other videos we'll talk about you know how we use that and you know, why we use it and um, kind of how it works in this kind of ventilator because it is a little different than the bias flow uh, that that you're you're used to in in, in conventional ventilation. Um, it still does um, obviously um, is involved in washing out CO2, um, but it isn't as involved in the triggering process. A lot of times we'll use bias flow in um, more more traditional conventional ventilators to help with um, triggering the ventilator. We talk about flow. Uh, triggering specifically. Um, that's not the case in, uh, with the uh, oscillators. The oscillators uh, are basically um, CMV. It's controlled mechanical ventilation. That, that there really is no interaction with the patient um, in this, this type of ventilation. Okay, so moving on, what I have is I have another knob here, and this is what, what's uh, known as my mean airway pressure adjustment. Okay, this is how I adjust the mean or the average um, pressure um, encountered in the airways. And I can actually monitor that mean airway pressure. If you guys look over here, let me select blue. Um, here um, on the left, there's a little gauge here, that 30.2, um, that is the mean airway pressure. So um, I use this knob to change that value there, the mean airway pressure. Um, fair enough. Okay, so we move on, and then I have um, these three controls here. Let me just go ahead and mark those out for you guys. Um, the uh, first one here on the top is for my power, and this is what's known as, uh, sometimes we call that our delta P. And what do we use this for? Well, what we use this for, if, if you look at an oscillator, and, and maybe I'll move this up here, um, you kind of see this little little circular uh, area down here that's kind of cut off but there basically what I have is there's a rubber seal and then it's kind of like a speaker like a subwoofer of a speaker and maybe if I were to look in there um, I would have a little piston inside of there okay and then I have this you know obviously that rubber covering here and then that piston kind of moves this way and that way and it oscillates back and forth obviously very quickly um, and it's that oscillating um, and then obviously on the other side um, of that rubber seal I have the air uh, that is oscillating uh, going into the patient um, so that's kind of what 
uh, we have here, well, what that delta P does is that delta P basically um, changes how much displacement I have here. If I have very low, dis uh, very low, low delta P's, um, that the little piston is not going to move very much. A very high delta P, and the piston is going to move um, more. So I'll be able to move more uh, bulk amounts of, of air, if you will, by uh, changing the delta P. Um, so that's my power. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the next thing that we have underneath that is, uh, and obviously delta P, uh, so this is where I increase or decrease my delta P. There's a little lock on the side there, and this is uh, my value. Um, down below that I have another knob, and then I can monitor that value here. This little knob here is uh, for my percent I time. Okay, that's how I um, increase or decrease my eye time. And here we have 33%, which is actually fairly standard. Um, um, in a lot of adult patients, at least, 33% uh, eye time. 33% um, uh, eye time, of course, gives us an ID ratio of 1 to 2, which is, which is a normal ID ratio. And obviously, I can uh, decrease, uh, increase or decrease that ID ratio as needed. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and move down. I have another knob here, and I can see that value here. And this is where I um, change my frequency. And because the the ventilator oscillates, um, you can see that this is 5.0 here, and the frequency well, we're talking we're talking about a literal frequency here. And the way that an oscillator works is obviously that little piston that I, that I drew a little earlier uh, moves back and forth very quickly, and we measure frequency just like we would measure, um, say, uh, light or sound or any kind of wave, and that is measured in hertz, or Hz. And one hertz equals one cycle per second. Okay, so if I had this frequency here set at 1, that would give me 1 cycle a second or 60 cycles per minute. All right. um, here I have 5, which is a fairly standard setting. Um, so 5, I have my frequency set at 5 hertz on this ventilator here. Oh, let me erase that. So I have my frequency set at 5 hertz, so that's 5 cycles per second, okay? So we can go here 60 times 5, move this up a little bit, that's 300 cycles per minute. Very impressive, if you think about it, and, and actually seeing one of these in action is just an incredibly impressive. Um, experience and there are some videos on the on the internet that you can look up and actually see lungs uh, oscillate and even alveoli oscillate very very interesting different way of ventilating okay so let's move on here uh, so I have this little this little um, little button here this little button is a start stop button uh, we use to start and stop the ventilator um, I have um, this little readout here, and this is actually um, the, this, this little red dot here will move this way and that way as the ventilator oscillates. And this is kind of what we use to calibrate um, that piston because we want that piston kind of centered in, in oscillating kind of like uh, that. Um, so that kind of helps us uh, uh, calibrate it and keep it centered. Okay, so we talked about this here. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is this little area here. Um, these are our alarms. And um, these are the important ones here. And these are actually, there, there's no like, there's no touch display or any of this. This is very old school, um, you know, very old school manual operation, how, how we interface with this. So it is not, um, you know, these are actually uh, the way that you interface with these is, is actually tactile. Um, so these are my alarms. This is my high, my pressure high, and my pressure low alarm here. So that is the basic um, interface 
uh, that we have uh, with the 3100A and 3100B um, oscillator, oscillatory ventilators. And again, I hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and um, hopefully I'll get some more videos up on these. As always, thanks for hanging in there.